Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, Brittany here. Uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, a little daily routine that you can do to help strengthen your feet, um, to mobilize the feet, open up the hips a little bit. So hope you guys are all ready to join me. Uh, a couple things before I get started. Um, you will need some things to do today's exercises with me. Uh, like I mentioned in our Facebook video yesterday, you will need a, a ball, something that is firm that you can put a little bit of pressure into. All right, so I'm gonna be using a lacrosse ball today. You can also grab a golf ball or anything around you that you can roll the bottom of your foot on. Um, as long as it's um, small enough, I think I was, I was looking at um, one of my small glass jars uh, that I had, you know, anything that you can really put a little bit of pressure into. So grab a ball uh, or two, why not? Uh, you will need a pair of socks, all right? We will be doing some uh, toe spreading, which if you do have some toe spreaders, I know a few of you do, please go ahead and grab those. I can also tell you where you can get some if you're interested at the end. So I just have a regular pair of socks with me. Uh, I also wanted to show you all um, these socks, I'll probably do it a little bit later, that have individual toes, and I know it's a little weird, um, but it definitely does good things for our feet when our toes have room to spread. So, grab a pair of socks, uh, a ball, and also a towel. Alright guys, I just have a regular bath towel here with me, and you do want to fold it a few times. All right, we're going to be stretching the calf. You can roll it, you can fold it, as long as it's something that's elevated here. Uh, if you also have a foam roller, you can use that um, for some of the things that we do. Uh, really anything that you can use to stretch your, stretch your calf. So, uh, let's get started in a minute. Uh, come on in. Hope we're doing well. Um, I can't see your comments right now, so if you do have any comments, I'm going to try to flip the video towards the end of our session today, just so I can answer any questions, but drop them down below in the comments, let me know if you have any questions about everything, and uh, we'll get into today's, uh, today's work. All right, so uh, I titled today's, uh, today's program, uh, Get These Piggies Moving, all right? Um, it's something that we don't often think about, but we're going to be doing stuff with our toes, with our feet, opening up our hips a little bit, and I wanted to do something that was a routine that you could do daily. Uh, so this, uh, you'll see it takes about 20 minutes or so, um, shorter if you want to go through it quicker, or you can make it longer, you can change things out, but it's a pretty basic routine just to, you know, develop some, some, um, some strength in the foot and restore some movement, all right? So why do we strengthen our feet? Uh, I don't know if you guys can read this uh, too well, but our feet are pretty complex, like I mentioned in my last presentation. Uh, da Vinci says that the foot is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art, which is something that in, in the foot com community we really love. Um, the foot is very complex. It's uh, often forgotten about. We consider it the low-hanging fruit. Uh, but... Uh, there's two major motions of the foot, and they're polar opposites. So you have your foot, which is supposed to be a lever, right? A lever to propel us forward, which is rigid, uh, just like any other type of lever. Or um, it can be a mobile adapter. So mobility plus a rigid lever, they're different. But our foot has the capability to do both functions, all right? So there's 26 bones in our feet. Um, in each individual foot, so a quarter of the bones in our body are in our feet, uh, which tells you something. Uh, there's 33 joints in there, and all of them are supposed to have their own little articulations and movements. Uh, so if they don't get that movement, those articulations, then uh, we can be in for some trouble. Uh, hundreds of muscles, um, tendons packed into four layers, and that's something interesting about the foot, I think. Um, is that it's not just one layer of muscle, but it's four layers, so there's a lot that's jam-packed in such a small area, all right? Uh, why is it important? Well, it's our only con point of contact with the ground, right? Uh, on the daily, most of us are just walking around. We're not, uh, you know, doing too many crawling things, too many hanging things, so we really connect to the ground through our feet. And so if we view our feet as a foundation, just like a house, 
We want our foundation to be strong. Um, we want it to be stable um, because everything that you build the house with uh, on top of that foundation is going to be a lot more stable um, if the foundation is. So um, through our feet, we stabilize and we support our entire body. All right. Um, so therefore, if our feet are strong, our, the rest of our bodies will be stronger as well. So definitely important to work on this area, even though we often stick it in shoes and socks and uh, wear heels and all these things that damage our feet. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, today's routine, it's going to be about eight exercises. We're going to do some stretching in with it as well. So, like I said before, it takes about 20 minutes. Uh, you can simplify it. You can add on to it. Uh, my routine looks a little bit different than this. Um, but for today, uh, again, if you're joining us a little bit later, lacrosse ball, grab a ball, grab a pair of socks, um, a towel. I'm going to be doing this all in my chair today. Um, typically, I sit on the floor and do it. Um, ground sitting is really good to work the mobility of our hips. But I'm going to do it in a chair today just so I can show you guys how, uh, how it's done. We will be doing some exercises standing as well. So I have a little area over here that I'm going to use the wall for. All right, and your hands, because we're going to be using them to spread our toes. So let's get down and dirty, everyone. Um, now let's get ready. So the first exercise that we're going to do is a finger inter interlace um, and mobilization. So we often call this a hand foot shake. Uh, the exercise tells you exactly what we're doing here. We're going to shake our hand. Uh, or shake your foot with our hand. All right, so this exercise is really good for opening up the forefoot. Um, when we wear sneakers or shoes, any type of uh, anything on our foot, any covering, you'll notice that our toes kind of squish together a little bit. It's just the way that shoes are designed. Um, it kind of points in, uh, whereas our feet are supposed to be wide at the toes. So it doesn't do good to always be sticking ourselves into shoes that narrow our feet. So this is a great exercise that we can do to open up that beginning part um, or the, the front section of our foot. Uh, I'm going to get started crossing one ankle or one leg over my other. I want you to stick one hand on the ankle, your other hand. This may be a little challenging, especially if you have bigger fingers. So I understand if, uh, if you're in a little bit of pain with this. But you pretty much just want to start with the tips of your fingers. And you want to put the tips in between your toes. So we don't want to, you know, pry them in there too much. We're opening up an area that isn't open uh, for a lot of people. So definitely be careful with this. And even just doing it with your hand may be a bit challenging. So if you can't get your fingers in there, that's why we have the socks, all right? So keep your hand in there for a minute if you have it, if you want to use a sock, all right? Uh, women, if you go to the, uh, to the nail salon and you get a pedicure, we're used to them slipping things in between our toes, or men, if you go get a pedicure as well. Um, so we want to take this sock and bring it through our toes just like you would if you were at the nail salon. They do this with a piece of um, a foam, uh, foam spreaders. They oftentimes will use a paper towel as well. So you can take your sock and I'm pretty much just going to thread this in between my toes. Right. If you're still, actually, that's good. All right. So looks like that and you can start to feel how your foot is starting to open up a little bit we're gonna hold this for about two minutes on each side all right and I have the sock in there right now if you still have your hand in continue to keep your hand in I'll keep the sock but right here I just want you to start to move around the front of our foot your your foot a little bit all right get in some movement there And really just play around with, you know, moving those joints around. I'll oftentimes keep my hand right on my ankle and go through some large rotations as well. Uh, later on in today's presentation, we have some, um, some ankle rotations. So you don't have to go too crazy here. 
uh, but definitely get in the middle of that foot and I oftentimes will like to stick my hand here and then just do a little bit of side to side action that way. Um, go ahead and switch feet if you're ready. So the hand is nice because it integrates, you know, more sensory input, I think, for our body when we are more involved in what we're doing, which is why I like having uh, the hand to do this. Of course, the sock is passive. So I will sometimes, well, I have toe spreaders, but if you don't have toe spreaders, you can put socks on. And it's a great time to spread the toes when you're sitting down watching TV, uh, just lounging around the house, maybe you're reading a book or something with your feet up, it's a great time to display the toes. You don't even have to think about it. You know, it takes 30 seconds to put that sock in. And here I'm just going to mobilize the front of this foot a little bit. And then add in some rotations. All right, and on the second foot, I want us to try something else now. Uh, now that we've opened up a little bit of space there, sometimes I like to, um, to kind of pull the toes apart too, get a nice stretch in there while we already have our foot up on our, on our knee. So you can take your two toes, or I'll take my big toe, the second toe, and you want to kind of pull them apart a little bit, and then you want to reverse it, so you're pulling away from each other. Try that a little bit. Don't stretch too far if it's uncomfortable. Sometimes I'll pull apart too, get a little bit of space. And so some conditions that we'll see with, um, with having, or with restriction in the front of the foot will be something like a neuroma, which is what I had that kind of got me started on this path of, of foot health and sharing about foot health and how important, you know, strengthening our feet are and our hips are. Uh, it was pretty much because of the shoes that I was wearing. Uh, the, we have these kind of, well, we have all this space in between we, muscles and, and joints pretty much my nerves became a little rest, uh, constricted because I was squishing my feet into, um, my toes into shoes. And they were just regular athletic shoes that I was wearing on the daily. So that was a little bit of a concern for me, the fact that my normal everyday shoes, you know, were causing my feet pain. So this exercise is really good for, um, you know, it, that helped me the most with my neuromas. Uh, hammer toes can kind of be caused by this because you know, the toes are being squished together a bit. So the finger inch release is something that I really like. And I'm going to show you two different spreaders that I have. Just if you're interested in, in getting these for yourself, I have these. These are white spreaders. These are from uh, the Foot Collective, the company that, um, it's a health education company that I'm a foot nerd in. And uh, these ones are really stretchy. You can stick them pretty easily in between your toes. Uh, they may be a little bit tough to get into at first, as well as these ones. Uh, these are yoga toes. All right, I got these on Amazon. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, both sets. Um, these ones are easier. You can just slide your toes right in. But with these, you can't walk in. So that's the hard part there. All right, so those are toe spreaders. You would just pretty much put these straight on the toes like that. It's a nice passive stretch of the toes. So when I was having a lot of my foot pain at the beginning, I would put those on every evening uh, for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour. I worked up to wearing them for a lot longer. So the key with all of these exercises, especially because we're going to be putting you through um, different movements or different positions that you're not used to, definitely take everything slow. Uh, especially if you have a lot of foot dysfunction and it's been a while, you're going to want to slowly progress through this. You don't want to do too much too quickly. Uh, your body will tell you. <laughs> All right. And so the nice thing that I like about this finger interlace, um, take your hand out if you haven't already, but just feel your toes a little bit. Does your foot feel a little bit more open? And if it does, which it should, awesome. All right. So that's our finger interlace. A um, little bit of uh, uh, toes back and forth. And that's our first exercise. Sometimes I even just stick my hand in there if I'm driving in the car or a long uh, road trip. Just put it in there, move it around a little bit, two minutes a day, and then move on. All right. We're going to need the ball for this next exercise. This is our lacrosse ball rollout. So now we're going to, again, mobilize those joints in the front of the foot. So go ahead and grab any ball that you have, any rolling type surface that you can use. 
Uh, this exercise is going to be done for two minutes a day, or two minutes per foot per day. Uh, there ha there's a study that's shown that the uh, that rolling out your foot with a lacrosse ball before you um, before you do balance exercises for five minutes improves your balance. So, especially now when we're at home and all of you are participating in our uh, 10:30 balance and strength class or our new intro to strength class on Tuesday and Thursday at 11 with Becca, if you wanted to grab your ball roll your feet out for a couple minutes right before class starts, and then you're going to be good to go. Once we get into those exercises, you'll be able to feel your feet a little bit more, feel your body move, um, and have better proprioception and control of what you're doing. So, a uh, little tip there. So, let's take this lacrosse ball. I'm going to put it down on the ground. And I like to start with my heel planted, and I just like to put a little bit of pressure in here. So this is something that you can do uh, in the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, evening, I sometimes will do it twice a day or three times a day just if I have the ball rolling around, uh, laying around. But the amount of pressure that you apply, apply into the ball is dependent on you. So if you push and there's pain, back off a little bit. All right? But you do want to be putting a little bit of pressure into this. I really hope that you can see, see my ball. So we're going to start... Uh, with rolling the foot forward and backwards. So if you need to hold on to something, the wall, a chair, table, and we're just gonna go nice, smooth movements forward and backward with this ball. And it should feel pretty good. All right, I like to turn my foot in a little bit so I can get underneath that arch. And I have one spot that's towards the back of my heel that gets pretty tight. So I'll just hold that position, take a couple breaths, breathe into it, and then I'll move on and keep rolling the ball. Definitely make sure that you get the outside of the foot as well. All right, putting pressure in, you can go slow, you can go quickly, do a little bit of a variation there. And once we're done with forward and backward movements, we then want to plant the heel, and we're gonna keep that ball right underneath the foot. So that's gonna be this picture here, if you can see that. So here, uh, we're gonna do some side sweeping motions. So uh, I like to start with the ball towards my pinky toe and then just sweep and then pick up my foot a little bit and then sweep, pick up and sweep. So like I said before, there's four layers of muscles in our feet. So some go, um, the fibers go in, different directions, so it's important that we kind of work at our foot from a couple different angles. Roll a little bit. All right, and then after that, I have over here a picture of a big toe stretch. So I like to do it with the ball as well. Um, so after I go forward, backwards, side to side, I will oftentimes, even just before the big toe actually, just get a nice stretch in through the, the other four toes. So. I like to just, you know, let my foot relax, but get a nice um, flexion in the toes there. And then this may be tough, but stepping over the foot a little bit gives you a really good stretch. You may cramp a little bit. This may be painful. Like I said, back off, but cramping is completely normal when you first get started. So I like to just stretch the toes a little bit there. Stretch the big toe. So this, the ability of your big toe joint to go into this extension is really important, especially when it comes to how we walk, all right? Uh, we don't get a lot of that extension with our shoes. In fact, a lot of footwear has a rocker in it. So your foot doesn't even go through a full range of motion. You just kind of, it just rocks you onto the front of the foot, which is good in some cases, not in all. So I'll do a big toe stretch there and go ahead and stretch, uh, switch the feet so this pretty much just wakes up the muscles, uh, gives a little bit of motion in there. Um, you know, our feet, a lot of people have stiff feet. Think about what we put them in every day. All right. And then after that, I like to do another stretch with the big toe. So we just did that pretty much with the ball. Now I want you to take the 
toes and push them towards the ground. This one's going to be really tight, uh, may not even be too doable depending on how your foot is, but this is a good stretch to do as well. So I'll roll out with the ball a couple different ways and then I'll stretch the big toe this way and the big toe with the ball. So pretty much just offsetting what our, what our shoes do to our feet, which isn't bad. It's just good that we, you know, do the mobility work um, either before or after. All right. So moving on, uh, we're going to do some ankle cars. And if you were one of my Cheshire members, I've been talking a lot recently about cars, um, not the ones that you drive. These ones are controlled articular rotations. So we have this saying that's move every joint, um, every joint in the body uh, through its full range of motion every day, and you should be good to go. Uh, the reason why we have, or one of the reasons why we have a lot of pain and dysfunction is just that our joints don't move the way that they should anymore. Um, or there's some restriction there just because we don't put our joints, um, or there's no familiar, familiarity in there because we don't put our joints in positions that make them work. So. The ankle cars uh, are, well, our ankle joints, I should say, are really important in supporting our body weight, in balance, in locomotion, or how we walk. Think about if you've ever had an ankle sprain before. Uh, a lot of the therapy with a, with a sprain or anything like that is going to be regaining your balance, all right? There's three joints in the ankle, um, and it's really important that they have that stability to connect the lower leg to the foot. And our ankles, uh, we don't talk about, we don't give our, our ankles enough love. Uh, ankles and hips, I say. So our ankles, we should have good dorsiflexion, good plantar flexion, which is um, pointing your toe down towards the ground is plantar flexion, pulling your toes up towards you is dorsiflexion. I know Dave in his presentation did a couple exercises with, uh, with the ankles when he presented on Thursday, so you can always check that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's important that we move our ankles through a full range of motion. Um, a car or controlled articular rotation is really good for bringing um, awareness to an area that we may not have um, much of a neurological connection to anymore. So I'm gonna do this in my chair for the first time. Uh, like I said, I normally, uh, I normally sit on the ground the key with the car, or this ankle car, is that we need our whole leg to be locked out. So if you're in your chair, keep your leg elevated if possible, and hold on to your knee or right underneath your knee on the top of your shin. So we want to make sure that there's no bending here. In my pictures, you can see that I propped up my leg. Um, I put this book right underneath my calf. And that allowed my ankle not to move because we don't want movement there either. So to do our car, let's get started. One leg out straight and you know, hold on to that knee a little bit. I want you to pull your toes back towards you as much as you can. All right. So this is dorsiflexion of the ankle. I want you to then drop that toe, the big toe down. We're going to start to rotate the foot into inversion. We're going to slowly circle down, kind of pointing the toe a little bit, plantar flexion. We're going to invert here, bring it right back up. Let's do another circle that way. So going into eversion, plantar flexion, bring the toe up, and come right back to center. You may feel some pulling along the, uh, the side of the calf with that. That's okay. We're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction now. So now we're starting dipping the pinky toe down. Stretch, 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 stretch. That leg stays straight. Circle it around. And come on up. We'll do one more rotation. Go all the way up. So it's a little different than just taking your hand and rotating your ankle. We're trying to bring awareness to this, this area and control it nice and smoothly. All right, so typically on a, on a day to day, five circles in each, in each um, direction, just once on each side. If you wanted to, I also have, no, use what you have, right? So let's take this trash can 
And if you wanted to, we're going to switch legs now. I'm going to prop up my leg on this trash can. So now I don't have to work to lift up to keep my leg up. My ankle's tied in. My knee is locked out. Let's do two rotations each way here. We're slowly going to rotate. And one more. The nice thing about this is that you can really stretch and try to bring that ankle through a full range. You'll feel some tightness. Go ahead and reverse direction. All right. And then afterwards, I know Dave did this on Thursday. We can just do some, um, some drills just pointing and flexing the foot. So I'm just going to push my, my toes down as much as I can. You'll feel a nice stretch, maybe even a cramp in the foot here. Go ahead and lift those toes up towards you. Pull it back as much as you can. We'll point again. And we'll flex again. And then we can just do some eversion, some inversion. So ankles go in this way. All right, just to get some movement there in the ankle, we will do some more dorsiflexion stuff in a little bit. So those are ankle cars. So really important that we get good motion there in the ankle joint. All right, moving on to our toga. I know it's a little interesting of a word, uh, but toga uh, is really good uh, for improving the strength of our intrinsic muscles, which are those really small muscles um, in the center of our, well, in our feet. Um, and this also helps bring awareness to our toes. So the intrinsic muscles of our foot often, if we say fall asleep, right, or uh, tend to be on the weaker end just because of the footwear that we use and the fact that we're not strengthening our feet or doing anything to make our foot function the way that it's supposed to. So this is probably going to be uh, a struggle to even, you know, can do you have the ability to pick up your toes? All right. And this is also good for developing some mobility in through the big toe, uh, bringing awareness to that area. Um, that big toe does play a huge role in our postural control and our stability. How do we stand? How do we walk? How do we run and jump? All of that. So I put here, play around with it because it doesn't have to be super exact. Do what feels comfortable for you. This is just a little bit of a guideline, but we're going to start with bringing just our big toe up. So the challenge is, do you even have the ability to do this? I tried this with my roommate not too long ago. She could not, she's 25, she could not lift up her big toes. So it's not an age thing, um, it's an everyone thing. So let's get started. And I want you to start with your feet right underneath your, um, your shoulders. You could go hips if you wanted to, but bring them in nice and close. And I first want you to kind of spread the toes as much as you can. All right. From here, we'll work one foot at a time. So let's start with our right foot. I want you to go ahead and try to lift up the big toe on that right side. You can push down the other four toes while you're at it. All right. And then put that toe back down. Let's try that two more times. Lifting up, coming down, lifting up, coming down. And right now you may not be able to lift up the big toe. I know for me at first, these were pretty challenging. I couldn't, I could do it on one side, but I couldn't do it on the other side. So you may be in that situation too. If you work on it, it will get better. The more that you do something, you know, there's something called the, the said principle that we use in, in fitness. It's the specific adaptations to impose demands. So the positions that you put yourself in uh, most frequently is how you're going to move, right? So if you always, um, the more frequently you do something like this, the better you're going to get at it. All right, let's switch to our left foot, spread those toes, go ahead and lift up or try to lift up that left toe, left big toe, drop it down, up again, down and up again and drop that down. All right, so that may be a bit of a challenge. This next one may be as well. Uh, but like I said, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. The next one is going to be lifting the other four toes up. So instead of doing this now, 
we're doing this. All right. You can do this both, uh, both sides at the same time. I prefer to focus on one if that helps you, you know, bring awareness to just one side first. Uh, but you could always do here and just work on, you know, lifting up both big toes at the same time. So now we're still going to get set up with our feet right underneath our shoulders. Okay. A little bit of a bend in the knees. And now I want you to push down that big toe as hard as you can and lift up your other four toes. All right. Let's put them all down. Do it again. And I'm doing it with both sides at the same time. Place it down. Lift up. Place it down. So how is that one? The third one that we're going to do is now bringing, lifting all of our toes up and then splaying or actively spreading. Okay? So we did some passive work earlier with our hand or the sock. So now let's get set up. And I want you to lift all of your toes up off the ground. So I'm really putting pressure into the ball of my foot. And I want you to try to separate the toes, spread them away from each other, and then sl slowly place them down on the ground. All right. We'll do that two more times. Lift up the toes spread and place them down for an added challenge once you go to place them down try going pinky to third toe or pinky to fourth toe third toe second toe big toe down and see if you can control the toes individually all right we'll do one more spread 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 and place down so toga is nice because you can do, you can play around with all your toes. You know, some people do, um, you know, listen to a song and just try to move your toes around for an entire song. You know, pick something that they like to listen to, gives you a little bit of, a um, little bit of movement, a little bit of bounce. All right. So our toga, weird exercise a little bit, but we definitely, that's one way to bring awareness um, and immediately strength, immediate strength to that intrinsic area of the foot. The next exercise is called short foot, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have not heard of this exercise before. Uh, it's a really good exercise to engage the, the core of the foot. In my last presentation, I have a, a nice diagram of what looks like the core of our foot. It's right that center part. Uh, we have a core down there, just like we have an abdominal core that, you know, we control our, all of our movements kind of come from our core. Um, out into the extremities, not the other way around. So really good to strengthen our foot core. And a fun tip about our foot core is that it's on the same um, line as our abdominal core. So uh, we have something in our body called fascia, which is a connective tissue that lines all of our muscles, our joints, everything like that. So this fascia does stretch and, and bend. It's important that we keep it lubricated, all right? Um, but our foot connects to our core on that fascial line, on that, on that uh, deep front line. So we can really, or when we do exercises barefoot or uh, you no know, workout barefoot, anything like that, we can get a whole lot more out of what we're doing if we get this good connection to the ground from our foot. All right, I do a lot of balancing. Um, I know a lot of you know that already, but I do a lot of balancing on my beam. And it's pretty um, incredible the amount of, uh, or the amount of tension in my core by doing five minutes of balancing on a balance beam. So I get a core workout even though I'm just working on stabilizing the hip. All right. So short foot, it's going to be a little different. Uh, we're definitely going to do one side at a time for this. But I want you to get set up with heel down, roll onto the ball of your foot toes should be up right now. Spread the toes and shift your weight. So now it's fully over the foot. All right. You can hold on to something if you need to. I'm going to keep my other leg propped back here. To get, uh, to get started on short foot, the first thing I want you to do is push the tip of your big toe down into the ground. So you should feel a little bit of a lift of uh, the arch. We're going to hold this. I hope you're still holding. Hold for 10 seconds, and then we're going to relax there. I'll shake it out a little bit. Heel down, roll onto the ball of the foot, spread the toes, 
place the digits down, now shift over, and again, digging that big toe down into the ground, that arch lifts up slightly, you should feel a little contraction, maybe a cramp right here as you're doing it. All right, take a rest on that side. So that's our short foot. Definitely practice that one. It, it takes a couple tries to kind of get it right. But I say to do this five times on each side daily, um, one time through. Hold for 10 seconds. Holding that contraction is, is where the work is coming from on this exercise. Let's get set up with our other foot. So same thing, heel goes down. We're going onto the ball of the foot. We're spreading the toes, placing the digits down. And now shift your weight over. So we're standing right on top of that leg. And again, push the tip of the toe down. You should feel a lift. Hold that. And then relax on out. Take a step out, shake out the foot. We'll do that one more time. Heel down, ball of foot. Spread the digits, place them down, shift the weight. And then pressing the big toe down into the ground. Feel that contraction there in the, in the middle of the foot. And then relax. All right. So that's an exercise that's specifically for uh, that arch area of the foot. All right. So you, you can tell a little bit in this picture. The lift is very, very small. All right. So uh, just pushing the tip of the big toe down creates a small little arch. That's really all we need. All right, so short foot, it's a little bit different of an exercise. Try it five times on each foot, 10 seconds with a hold. All right, let me know how that goes. And we're now gonna move into our hip extension. So I do talk a lot about the foot and about our foot pain and our foot problems, foot dysfunction, but everything related to the foot really comes from the hips. So uh, yeah, foot strength goes hand in hand in how well your, your foot functions. Um, our optimal hip uh, function is limited by us sitting so often. So I know my, my teammates here at JE, they see me sitting on the floor for most of our meetings or, um, you know, sitting in a squat, something like that. So I try to get out of, um, well, there's some essential sitting, um, like driving your car. Um, when you're at an event, you have to sit down at your tables. Um, but there's a lot of non-optional sitting as well. So what I've been trying to do personally is just focus on what are my non-optional sitting times, um, sitting in a chair at least. Um, you can sit on the ground if you feel comfortable doing so. You can stand. Standing a lot more frequently is, is going to do us good. Uh, but uh, like I said earlier with that said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands, our hips get really comfortable at 90 degrees. And they get really comfortable here because we're always sitting in chairs and because all chairs are about this position. All right. So our hip can flex a lot more than 90 degrees, but most of us don't ever bring it into that range of motion. Right. So to counter the time that we spend sitting in chairs, one minute per each hour that you sit per day, which adds up to be a lot of time if you think about it, uh, if we think about our daily routine. Wake up, eat breakfast. You're sitting, um, you're sitting at the the breakfast table, right, with your first meal, and then you're gonna go sit into the car, drive to work. Now it's a different time, uh, but we're typically sitting for a little bit of time in the car. You go to work, you go about your daily activities. If you have an office job or a desk job, you're sitting down, even though you're standing frequently to get up and do things. Um, it's a lot of time sitting, and then afterwards we get back into the car, we drive home, we make dinner sit at the dinner table, we sit on the couch, we watch TV for a long period of time. So just try to spend a little bit of um, more time outside of chairs if you don't need to be there. So for our hip extension, um, it's really important that we get our hips to be able to go behind us. You see me doing hip extension exercises in our balance class all the time. Um, if you have limited hip extension, you'll notice it when you walk. How many of you um, do this personally or know someone who does, where we take short shuffling steps, right? Part of that is the fact that our hip, we can't get push off from behind us. So we can do this hip extension drill uh, seated, or I usually normally do it kneeling, which is this first picture here. 
I'm going to do it standing today, so a lot of you can do it alongside me. So to do this standing, I'm going to get set up a little bit on a diagonal here. I'm going to place one foot forward. My other foot is going to go back. All right. From here, I'm going to try to tuck my bottom under. I'm going to push this back hip forward towards the wall. So it's not a lot of a shift forward. It's really just a rotation here in the pelvis. You should feel some tightness there in the front of the leg. If you keep the heel up in the back, you can get a little bit bigger of a stretch. Of course, hold on to something if you need to. I like to take the same arm as the back leg and bring it up straight overhead so we can kind of stretch out that psoas a bit. You can even lean to the opposite side here. And as you're doing this, try to squeeze this glute as hard as you can. All right. Our glutes are responsible for hip extension and rotation in our, in our hips. So um, squeeze that glute, open up the hip. All right. Stretch that arm up. This position looks pretty much the same if you go and you want to do this on your knee. Uh, my Cheshire people, a lot of you, I try to get on the ground in this position. All right. Same thing, you'll feel a nice stretch here in the front of the hip. You can open up that arm above you, maybe lean slightly to the side, but it's not exaggerated here. It's not like um, I was a gymnast and we always did this stretch, but we pushed ourselves forward like this, which yes, you do get a stretch there, but it's just not as efficient as it should be. So count up the amount of time per day that you spend sitting in a chair. If it's eight hours, that means it's eight minutes per hip that you do this. Is that a lot of time? Yes. Uh, but if you split it up, try not to do eight minutes all at once. So when I'm on my morning call or my evening uh, meeting, sometimes I'll just sit for a minute on each side and then I'll go back into, you know, sitting on the ground. So I stretch my hips for a little bit. I like to break it up just so we're not doing a lot all at once. And it's also really important that we get some rotation in the hips as well. I know Dave has a lot of good drills that are used to turn on specific muscles in the hip, but especially because a chair sitting, we sit in this flexion, right? So we don't have the ability as well to extend, but we also lose out on our ability to rotate the hips, which is really important too. So our hips no longer do hip things, I like to say. So ask your trainer once you get back into the gym, or you can comment down below if you want some exercises to work on rotating the hip. I didn't do anything um, rotational here today just because uh, if we're doing this all in a chair, um, there's not too much that we can do here. Um, so you can ask a trainer to add that into your program. We can do things side lying um, on our stomach, sitting up. My Cheshire people, 90-90. I get a lot of you into that position if I can, which is great. All right. Moving on, we're going to go into ankle dorsiflexion. So we did a little bit earlier, but it's really crucial that we get into this end range of our ankle joint. All right. We don't do a lot of things on a daily basis to get us into that position. Uh, maybe walking upstairs, um, but definitely every time we sit, you can see here, uh, my hips are 90 degrees. My ankle joint, this is also you know, 90 degrees. So if we're just walking around all day, maybe going upstairs, maybe not even going upstairs and just sitting onto the couch or the chair, we never get our ankles, our knees to go over our ankles, which is really important. So let's do a drill to open that up a little bit. Uh, this is especially important because uh, footwear that we wear on a daily basis, they all, for the most part, have a bit of a heel. So what that does, instead of our foot being flat on the ground, like if you're standing without anything on, that lift of the heel actually puts your toes down. So it's sort of, so this is a plantar flexed position in the ankle. It's almost like you're walking downhill all of the time. So to do this ankle dorsiflexion drill, let's stand up and get against a wall. And this is a really good, good drill. I'm going to get started uh, with my left foot right in front of the wall. My toes are forward here. And all I'm going to do is bend my knee towards the wall. If you don't reach the wall, bring your foot forward a little bit. 
Do that again. Send that knee forward if you touch, great. If you need to move back a little bit, just adjust to a position where you feel a good stretch getting into that end range. So I like to do this 10 times or so. And I like to bend both knees, but if you were to stand a little bit closer, you know, one knee doesn't bend as much. So this is a really good drill. Just standing. Let's go ahead and switch sides. We'll do this for a couple rounds. And with this, it's important to keep the heel down, or really the whole foot should stay uh, flat on the ground. With this, we don't want any lifting of the heel. That's cheating. And we want to get the most out of all of our exercises, right? All right. So a lot of you will also uh, hear me say in your squat to get those knees forward and the hips back. Our knees do bend forward. Just as long as that heel doesn't come off, we should be good to go. Let's work on that dorsiflexion a little bit. All right. So that's a good one. 10 times on each foot up against the wall. You can even do it freestanding if you wanted to just, you know, you're about your day, you're standing watching, you know, something in the kitchen, you know, to go ahead and just keep those heels on the ground, bend those knees forward. Just do this a couple times a day. All right, get some movement back in there. We're going to move on to calves. So our calves, it's really important that we get good strength in them, but also a good stretch. So like I said, with uh, the footwear and having the heel elevated, it actually over time will shorten the calf muscles. Um, so that's not good. <laughs> so we're gonna stretch it out before we do some calf raises. Uh, we're gonna do it a couple different ways. So go ahead and get your towel out. All right, let's fold this up. Uh, if you wanted to, we do, uh, I know in our classes, we do our calf stretch at the end uh, two different ways. We typically will go against the wall like this, I hope you can see, or we'll extend that leg back and drive that back leg down. Those are both good ways to stretch the calves as well. You can drop them off of a stair, um, anything like that. But if I'm here, I just want to put my foot on this towel. Maybe fold it one more time so it's up a little bit higher. And I'm going to keep my free leg, the one that I'm not stretching, right in front of this leg. All right, so I'm feeling a nice stretch through the back there. And I just want to hold this. Leg is straight for this first round. All right, so once we're here, for a little bit of time, I say hold for 30 seconds, then move on to the next one. Go multiple times through this. You'll feel more of a relaxation the more times you go through it. So I'll usually do it, you know, three, four, five times. Try that out. But I now want you to bring our front leg back a little bit because now we're actually going to bend this knee. So my left foot is the one that was just doing calf stretching. I'm just going to bend that knee forward. Look, we're back in ankle dorsiflexion. So our calf is two major muscles. One you can only stretch by bending the knee. So that's why we're doing this one. And let's straighten that leg again, lean on forward, feel a nice stretch in the calf. And we'll go back again, bring that leg back, bend the knee, send it forward. You'll feel tightness more towards the base of that Achilles tendon. And let's stand it up, maybe shake the ankle out. I know I'm bringing you through a lot more um, movements than we typically do for this area on a daily basis. But after we do some calf stretching, I now like to open up the top of the foot too. So we're going to keep the towel down, step one foot forward. I'm still going to keep with my, my left side. And we just want to keep that leg out behind us and push your toes down. All right. You should feel a good stretch through the front of the shin now. And if this is really tight or really painful for you, back off of it a little bit. You can stand a little bit closer. Keep that foot in towards you here. Sometimes I'll do it this way instead of extending that leg out behind me. But if you feel a lot of tightness in this top of foot stretch, um, if you have hammer toes, which is 
um, your fingers kind of, or not fingers, your toes kind of claw down a little bit, which is common. We, we do that to keep our shoes on our feet. If that is a, a situation that you have with your foot, this top of foot stretch will help release, um, release some tension in that area that is kind of overworking a little bit with our feet. So after we do the calf stretch on that side, let's switch. We'll do it quickly on this side. Straighten that leg back. And then let's bend the knee now, bring that knee back. Hit that soleus, a good stretch there. And then again, leaning forward. Then one more time, step it back, bend the knee, drive it over the ankle. Very nice. And now that, oh, top of foot stretch, let's do that too. And when we're done, we're going to do uh, five calf raises with both of our feet down. So let's get set up facing your wall, your counter, your chair, wherever you are. You can do this freestanding. Feet are going to go right underneath our shoulders here, and we're going to lift the heels up, come down slowly, lifting up, come down slowly. All right, I want you to try to make sure that the ankles don't roll out in this. If anything, try to force your weight um, a little bit more towards that big toe instead of out to the side, all right? And when you're done with five, we can go into single leg calf raises, which is going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, one ankle stays, or one foot stays up. We're just going up on that side, right back down. We'll do three or so on this side. Pause at the top. Go ahead and switch it out. All right. And that single leg calf raise is going to be a little bit more, or a lot a bit more challenging. Uh, so you may not have um, an easy time doing that. That's okay. If you can do a bilateral calf raise, go ahead and stick to that. Uh, if not single leg, I'm laughing right now. I have um, the building next to me, the cat is hanging out of the window. I hope it, should, I hope it doesn't jump. Um, but that's what I'm laughing at. I've never seen him outside. So uh, yeah, wearing shoes is like walking down a hill all day. So resetting it with some calf raises is really good. Uh, aim for two sets of 15 repetitions on both sides, right? Oops. Right, and then after we do all of that, so we've mobilized the foot, we've opened up some space, um, we want to, and we've uh, opened up the hips a little bit too, you now want to do a little bit of work to stabilize the hip. All right, so as we open up, you know, new ranges in our joints, um, we want to be able to now control that new range. Um, it may be, you know, taxing on your nervous system to get into those new ranges. So let's make our nervous system comfortable. So you can do a lot of different things to work on your hip stability. The primary one here that I have is a single leg balance. All right, which is just lifting up a foot. In our balance class, we do a lot of things in this position, right? We twist even. Um, so Balancing, shoot for, you know, 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute on each side. I put reaching drills. So now that we've opened up, uh, opened up our hips a little bit and our ankles, let's explore if we can control it. One of my favorite reaching drills that I do in balance class all the time is going to be our clocks, right? So if you take our class, sometimes I switch it up. We dip down to 12. Oh, that's actually, should you do this leg? We dip to 12. We then reach our leg out. We then reach our leg back. And sometimes I go around the back here, and then sometimes I even go across in front of that body. So now we're, we're getting some good stability in through the hip as we're allowing it to rotate a little bit. Uh, high knee holds are really good for uh, working our hips two different ways, all right? We do marching high knees a lot in class, but for a high knee hold, I really want you to focus on lifting this knee as high as you can and driving this standing leg down into the ground as much as you can. So really we're working this leg in flexion and our other leg in extension to the maximal degree. 
So you can do this holding on to one, um, with one hand you can do it holding on to two things and just focus on driving that hip up as much as you can. So I'll try to hold and get that knee up for 10 seconds or so and then I'll relax. I'll do that five times or so on each side. Uh, as well as lunges and squats. So now that we've opened this up, we can lunge a little bit. You may feel like some of your movements are easier now. We'll get into our squat stance. We'll squat a bit. Feel how your hips are open. Ankles can bend now. So we always want to finish up, um, or we always want to follow mobility work with stability or strengthening work. All right. And a little summary of today. Four points that I have for you. One, let's get the foot stable. Um, the wider our base of support, the better, uh, or the more easily we are to balance. So you can um, increase your real estate, right? Um, by splaying the toes. Earlier we did it with our hand. We use the socks, it, toe spreaders if you have them, but splaying the toes, get more real estate so we have a better base of support to balance on. We wanna get the foot flexible. We wanna mobilize the forefoot, get some movement in there, let those joints move and articulate. All right, we wanna get the feet strong by increasing the intrinsic muscle strength of the feet. So let's move our piggies more, right? Um, anything that you do, just, just wiggle them, you know, a couple times a day on a daily basis, do that toga, you know, all good things. And our fourth thing is let our hips do hip things, right? So our hips, they hinge, you know, they rotate, um, they extend. So let's spend a little bit less time sitting in chairs if you can, stand a little bit more, stretch our hips, get them into extension. Uh, ask your trainer once we get back into the center to add some rotational drills in there. Um, if you want more information, let me know below in the comments. And if you have any questions, uh, you can send me an email, brittany at jointeffortexercise.com. All right. Um, send them to me, and uh, we're good to go. I'm going to try to turn the camera around so I can answer some questions, but let me know if you have anything. All right. Let's see what we have here. Make sure you're properly hydrated, Dave. I uh, love your yoga toes. Hi, Deb from Branford. Love that you're here, Carol. I miss you. Glad you're still doing balance stuff. Uh, all right. Yes, and plantar fasciitis, it's pretty involved. You may want to spend some time not being barefoot. Um, that would be good but um, rolling out your foot with a ball would be really good for that. Um, do some calf raises. Uh, you may need a little bit of support for the arch of your foot right now as, as um, that inflammation um, in that fascia comes down. Um, but start with rolling the ball. Don't put too much pressure into it. Um, don't go barefoot too much. Wear a little bit of a heel, heel lift in that foot. All right, guys. Uh, that is it. Any other questions for me, drop them below in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and thank you for joining.